Hey there and welcome back to RimWorld. My name is Pete and today we complete another episode of our RimWorld Ice Sheet Survival Series. Last time we left off, we took care of our power problems by producing some chem fuel. I also learned in the comments that you can in fact remove thin rock roofs and as usual we were visited by a few traders as well as a group of mechanoids. And we are now jumping back in exactly where we left off last time, with Cambia disassembling those mechanoids for steel plus steel and components, and with Cobra taking over that job a few hours later as Cambia heads off to bed. Late at night then our steel reserves are looking a bit more plentiful, and so Cobra now makes his way over to the rice farm. And of course with the addition of chem fuel that rice is becoming increasingly important as we now not only need it to make meals for our two colonists but also to produce chem fuel and in turn electricity for the base. The harvest is completed fairly quickly though and Cambia is also back on his feet and so the day now continues with husky training for Cobra and much more importantly with research for Cambia. In the last episode we quickly interrupted the research of the Starship reactor. Now though we have everything we need for chem fuel production, so we can flick the multi-analyzer back on and continue with that project. In the afternoon then Cambia consumes one of the last bits of human meat in the base and since we are running a bit low on human corpses in general with the huskies also feeding on them, we are now switching Cambia back over to the same diet that Cobra is also enjoying. Fine meals only, that seems to be a bit more sustainable at the moment. Speaking of which, with Cobra awake again he also immediately starts cooking. After slaughtering a thrombo in the last episode we have plenty of meat available and since our fine meal consumption is now also effectively doubled, Cobra will very likely spend a bit more time in the kitchen than in the last few episodes. At night then, with Cambia off to bed and nothing else to do, we will have Cobra make some sandstone. And the reasons for this are twofold. First of all, we could of course always use more building materials, and sandstone is arguably the most available one on this map, but cutting those stone chucks into finer blocks also serves a different purpose, and that is the increase of the beauty levels in that area. Every single stone chunk brings the perceived beauty of that outside area down, so removing them all makes the place a tiny bit more pleasant. Once the job is done, we can also see that Cambia is awake again, and with that the research project continues. Not for long though, because we have another project related to building materials coming up next. As you might remember, our steel reserves were becoming a bit of an issue in the last episode, and of course the amount of naturally occurring steel resources on this map is becoming lower and lower. For that reason, with a large amount of the steel we currently have in our base, we are now building an electric smelter. When worked on, this smelter will consume a pretty hefty amount of power, but it will turn unusable steel slag chunks into workable steel. Those chunks are scattered across the map in large numbers and I think every time a spacecraft or a drop pod falls from the sky, there is a chance that a few of these steel slag chunks rain down as well. Now of course using these chunks should by no means be your only way of acquiring steel, but at least for now there are lots and lots of them available and I think we should make the most out of that and take another step towards becoming a bit more self-sufficient. Now since these steel slag chunks are scattered all across the map, this also presents a perfect opportunity for our huskies to once again get involved. So far we had the huskies locked into their small stables for the entirety of winter, simply to avoid the risk of them getting hypothermia and freezing to death. Winter is slowly winding down though, and I think as long as we don't give them too much to do and limit their time outside, they should be fine, especially since the absolute coldest temperatures are already behind us. So yes, with spring around the corner it is time to release the huskies once more, and they will hopefully be a huge help for at least the next three months. With the huskies out and about we also have another trade ship arrive and as usual we will not let this one go without having a look at their inventory. Right, so we don't have a ton of silver at the moment but we have enough to buy ourselves a brand new flag vest. And the reason for that is Cambia who already has a flag vest equipped but that one is in poor condition and also marked as tattered apparel. So the switch here definitely makes some sense even though it will not entirely remove the tattered apparel thought from Cambia, because I believe his button down shirt is also in rough condition, but of course we will try to fix that soon as well. Now with the new flag vest equipped we also no longer need the old one and so even though it is of course not incredibly valuable, we can sell it right back to the traders while they're here. This now makes us roughly $7 richer and also clears up a space in the storage room and even though that's of course not much, it is better than nothing.
The remainder of the day is then spent with cooking and research, and so we jump back in at night with Cambia already fast asleep. And our area of interest for tonight, that is the storage room. Of course, a storage room is always going to be a fairly nasty looking place, and especially with one this size, that is pretty much unavoidable. Still, I think we can improve it at least somewhat, and that is where all of the sandstone blocks we made earlier come back into play. Just like we did with our entrance area in the last episode, we will now put sandstone down in the entire storage room, or at least in that small part of it that we can currently afford to upgrade. Now, of course, that is not going to make the place that much more beautiful, but it will remove all of those small minus one penalties from the regular stone floor, and by doing so, and maybe with a few other improvements, we might be able to get the room up from hideous to only ugly. Again, the room doesn't need to be terribly beautiful. After all, our colonists normally don't spend too much time there. The smelter and the camp fuel refinery will likely also not stay there permanently, but despite all that, I think Cobra and Cambia have earned themselves the right to at least decent looking rooms. Now, this first section of flooring is pretty quickly put into place, and so up next we continue with camp fuel production. Cambia is also already awake again and busy researching, and the main reason why we're now turning more rice into camp fuel is that we're simply running out of storage space in the kitchen. Additionally, of course, more rice will be coming in soon from the hydroponics farm, so we can afford to use up some of it. But especially with the wind subsiding, it still looks like power is a bit of a problem, so maybe we should look into building a second camp fuel generator soon. For now though, switching off the stove is enough to keep us going, and after I just talked about it as expected, Cobra now goes up to bring in another rice harvest. In the meantime, the huskies have also delivered a few more sandstone chunks to our entrance area, and we ran through our supplies pretty quickly with the flooring project in the storage room, and for that reason, Cambia will now make a bit more sandstone so that the project can continue. And even with that current build completed, we will leave the stockpile there. I have a feeling we will get back to chopping stones relatively soon. After a quick meal, Cambia then refuels the generator, and then it's time for the usual change of shifts. Cambia sits down for a round of joy before going off to bed, while Cobra wakes up well rested and begins work on the farm. Once all of the re-sewing is done, it is then finally time to fire up the smelter for the very first time. Night is also a very good time to do this, because our sun lamp doesn't consume electricity at night, and so we have some to spare and can use the smelter without having to worry. We currently have four steel slag chunks in our storage room, so let's smelt them all into usable steel. And here we are, one steel slag chunk gives us 20 units of steel. That is of course not a ton, but still enough to make this a viable method of acquiring steel. After the smelting, our steel reserves are now looking a bit better, but going forward we probably want to do this regularly. From the smelter we now move on to the stonecutter's table. Just like Cambia before, Cobra will now make some stone blocks, which will then be used to continue our flooring project in the storage room. With the stone chopping taken care of and Cobra playing a round of poker before bed, we then have cargo pots dropping in. And what's inside could be extremely valuable down the line. 58 units of uranium, probably the rarest material in the game, and required for the construction of the ship to escape the planet. So this is definitely something that we'll need one way or another, so let's mark it to be hauled. Luckily, we have the huskies to take care of that job. With Cambia, we now interrupt his research and continue the flooring project. He should be finished in no time and thus improve the room one step further. And here we are, just a few hours later, as Cambia sits back down at the research bench. The room itself is still considered ugly, but it's getting better, small step by small step. In the evening then, with Cobra already up again and training the huskies, we have another trader coming in, so let's see what they have to offer. Right, so our silver supplies are running low, but we can change that here, and we'll do so by selling some of the lower quality leathers that we have. They will not keep our colonists as warm as the wool, so we don't really have much use for them, and instead turning them into cold hard cash gives us a bit more flexibility. In addition to about 440 silver worth of leather, we will also sell some plasteel. Not that we don't need it, but we just have so much of it at the moment, and the stuff is pretty damn valuable, so I think we can part ways with just under 200 units here. As you can see, this also substantially increases the amount of money we can make in this trade, and we're not done yet as we also sell two of our clothing items that we don't really need. 
Now, with all of that cash, it is of course also a good idea to also buy something. And my first priority here is food, namely some beef. Regarding the rice, we are pretty much self-sufficient at this point, but for meat we always require animals, raiders or traders, and while we still have some left in storage, I also don't want to play it too risky, so 300 units of beef, that's 4 full stacks, that should last us quite a while. And here we are, two nice drop pots full of beef and silver, and especially the beef needs to be hauled inside immediately, otherwise it will deteriorate. Up next we then also receive a cry for help from a refugee and we haven't had those in a while. However, considering what's on her tail here, I think I'd like to pass. As I mentioned earlier, our defenses could use an overhaul soon and in total we would be dealing with 13 raiders here. Certainly not entirely unmanageable, but pretty risky at this point, especially since they have snipers and grenadiers in the party. So unfortunately we will pass on the opportunity for another colonist and some human meat, but taking a look at the husky stables we can also see that we should probably get that last bit sorted out soon, otherwise the huskies might be in a bit of a pickle. For the rest of the night Cobra makes a few more meals and hauls some meat back into the kitchen, and then in the early morning with Cambia already awake and researching again we have officially made it into spring. And with that, we no longer have to fear the outside temperatures. Our huskies can freely roam around. Animals, raiders and traders should return to the ice sheet soon enough. And hopefully the sun also makes an appearance again. After a few more hours of research, we can now send Cambia out to make stones again. Once he's done, he then heads off to bed and we can continue with Cobra. And Cobra is now making not only fine meals, but also pemmican. Due to its resource efficiency, pemmican was the meal of choice for animals in this series for the longest time, and with our human corpses dwindling, I think it's time we get back to that. Now pemmican will take a bit more time to make compared to the fine meals, but it can also feed a creature for longer, and since our husky population is pretty solid already, that increased efficiency is definitely nice to have. Now it's night time and that means it's time to make more steel. With temperatures back on the rise, I think it's also time to turn off the heater in the husky stables. Yes, outside temperatures might still be a tiny bit below their comfortable range, but not so much that it can seriously harm them. That once again saves us a bit more electricity and with the sun still hidden, I think that's a good thing. Using the smelter, Cobra then makes a few more units of steel before rushing off to train the huskies, but conveniently enough, Cambia is also awake again and ready to continue the task. Soon after we then find Cambia back at the research bench and Cobra already in bed, but Cambia's work is once again interrupted almost immediately. As you can see here, our batteries for the turrets is broken down and needs fixing. At this point I also decided to turn off automatic repair. Yes, this might slightly increase the amount of micromanaging we have to do, but hopefully it also turns notifications back on, because the malfunction on the battery here once again went completely unnoticed. In the evening then, another rice harvest is ready to be brought in by Cobra, and while he's harvesting we can also recharge the newly repaired battery, and we also receive a small notification here that our faction relations with the Mencho of the Rock have increased by 10 points. Now they are still very much hostile towards us, but in theory this should make it easier to make peace in the future. On the other hand, of course, we have to think long and hard about whether or not we actually want to make peace with them, as that would of course remove a reliable source of raids. Now back to rice farming, as you can see I have flicked the remaining 3 hydroponics farms back on as well. That means we are now once again running at full capacity, with that one heater turned off and the sun hopefully returning soon, I think we can afford that. Just as Cobra is finished and tries to relax a bit, we have another trader pass by. But long story short, I decided not to buy anything here. The goods offered were very similar to those of the trader that we had just a few moments ago, and there wasn't anything exceptional for sale. That means it's time to begin another day, hopefully full of research for Cambia and cooking for Cobra, at least until we have a bit more pemmican for the huskies to get them through the next few days. As Cobra goes to sleep, Cambia then also once again gets his research work interrupted, this time though not only to haul a bit of rice into the kitchen, but to make a potentially very lucrative trip out on the ice sheet, where I have just spotted a sizable herd of muffalo. And well, we have already talked about meat being a rare commodity these last few days, so let's send Cambia out on what might be a very worthwhile hunting trip. Right, while Cambia is doing his work, we also have a combat supplier flying in, so there is definitely once again no shortage of trade in this episode, so let's jump ahead a few moments, wait until Cobra is awake again, and then see if we can't strike a good deal. 
Right, once again, not too much of interest here. I decided to sell some of our weapons, though. We have now been holding on to these for at least a year, I think. We still have plenty of guns to choose from, so the loss of a few that we're probably not going to use either way is not going to hurt us. Cambia, meanwhile, has caused quite a bit of carnage among the buffalo, and with a good number of animals already down, the herd finally decides to go for the revenge. Luckily, though, almost all of the animals here are already lightly injured, so I hope they won't be able to catch up. Comparing speeds with one of the pursuing buffalo, however, shows that this one is in fact a tiny bit faster than Cambia, so he might unfortunately catch a bruise or two while he makes his escape. Additionally, since it is getting closer to Cambia's bedtime, I think we'll also send him home soon, but since we want to be thorough, I have already drafted Cobra, who will in just a moment continue where Cambia left off. The buffalo, meanwhile, has caught up enough, and I think we have no other choice here. Let's fire and have Cambia eat the punishment. Right, first things first, the buffalo is now sufficiently slowed down. Cambia has also taken a pretty inconvenient bruise to his right leg. That, of course, slows him down even further, but luckily, speed-wise, he still has the edge. And just a few seconds before getting hit again, Cambia then downs the buffalo. The remaining animals should not be able to catch up, and so Cambia can now calmly head back to the base, eat something, and treat his wounds. In the meantime, Cobra joins the party and immediately goes to work with the assault rifle, and it doesn't take him long until the final buffalo falls. And with that, we should now have about 10 downed or dead buffalo on the map, and that should result in enough meat supplies for a long, long time. Now, Cambia is already resting up as Cobra enters the base with a buffalo corpse on his shoulders, and before he can drop that into the storage room, yes, we have another trader pass by. But since this is another combat supplier and we just had one, it shouldn't surprise that we once again don't make any exchanges. We have sold everything I'm willing to sell at the moment, and this trader has nothing for sale that we desperately need. Instead, for the rest of the night, Cobra is busy hauling buffalo corpses. If we leave them out here, the corpses will eventually deteriorate. That will of course not happen right away, so we have a bit of time. Still, it might also be a good idea to grab as much meat as fast as possible, otherwise the emergence of a polar bear or something similar could screw up our plans. In the morning then, Cambia is already fully healed again and ready to help with the hauling. The huskies can unfortunately not assist here, but as you can see, that doesn't stop them from running around the side of the slaughter. Just as Cambia is on the way back, we then have a fire breakout in the base, and so Cobra needs to wake up immediately to prevent it from spreading. Once again, a faulty conduit was the reason for the breakout, and had this happened a bit earlier with both colonists out hunting buffalo, then things could have gotten pretty bad, but luckily this time we were able to prevent anything worse. And in good RimWorld fashion, a bad thing is often followed by a good thing, and that is no different here as Ruby once again gives birth to two husky puppies. Now, I was thinking for a while about taking the patron naming rights list and adding these two to the colony as well. However, seven huskies is a bit too much in my opinion. With the recent changes in Beta 19, they would require constant retraining, and Cobra already spends much of his time awake dealing with the huskies, so I don't think we want to turn him into a full-time animal handler. Besides, even with the recent influx of muffalo meat, I think seven huskies could put a bit of a strain on our food supplies. As you saw throughout this in the last episode, five of them already eat quite a lot, so unfortunately I once again had to make a tough decision here, but for the sake of the colony, we're not keeping these two. One more event then, right here near the end of the episode. As a prisoner contacts us with a stolen radio, he is held by four members of the Mentor of the Rock and begs us to rescue him. If we approach it carefully, four enemies is certainly a number that we can deal with. However, looking at the map, the location is pretty far away from our base, and it should take us quite a while to get there, not to mention we also have to get back. So while I would certainly like to get out and give our colonists a bit more action, I think we'll have to pass on this one as well. We simply don't have enough manpower to afford this mission. And that now brings us almost to the end of the episode, but not before Randy Random can put one more spoke in our wheel. While being asleep, Cambia catches fibrous mechanites, a tricky disease that is luckily not lethal, and one that actually boosts a few attributes, including movement speed. However, the disease also lasts quite a while, and during that time it causes pain and increased tiredness. So for at least the next few days, Cambia will have to deal not only with a few severe mood penalties, but also with a rapidly increasing need for rest, which despite the increased movement speed will make him a slightly less productive member of this colony.
But, ladies and gentlemen, we will deal with that in the next episode. For today, I think we have once again improved our situation out here on the ice sheet. Despite all of the interruptions, the next research project is already halfway completed, and both our power and our food supplies are looking a lot stronger than before. So with that, let's make the cut right here. As always, I hope you enjoyed the episode, and if you did, I would be happy if you could leave a thumbs up. And if you want to support the channel further, then you can of course either subscribe if you haven't already, or you can also check out and maybe pledge to the Pete Complete Patreon. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.